Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Faith and Fandom Feedback Friday podcast. If you don't know me, my name is Hector Mirai. I am the primary author of the Faith and Fandom book series. I also like encouraging people and doing nerdy stuff with Jesus. So, yay, this is what I'm here for. Uh, we're going to go over the week's news and um, discuss what's going on, see how life has been. Uh, if you are watching this uh, live on Facebook or YouTube, um, or I think if you're watching this live on Facebook, feel free to comment, to interact. Love to hear from you. Um, if you are listening to this on the Faith and Fandom podcast channel, wherever you get your podcasts, or watching this on YouTube, just know that usually Friday mornings at some point I'm going to be doing this as a live broadcast and we'll be always glad to have you be part of it. But yeah, uh, it's October, chill is in the air, things are getting in that downward spiral to Christmas, the holidays and all the things in between. And so uh, it's pretty easy for things just to kind of pivot downward in terms of busyness and all the stuff that goes on. I'm at the place where uh, October is, for the most part, almost as busy as July for me. So just getting through everything and like, I think I handle things pretty well, mostly. Um, but I'm at the point I'm legitimately overwhelmed this weekend just because I've got too much going on uh, between DJing for weddings and church work and everything else. I've just straight up overbooked myself with life. And so that's on me. <laughs> I, but then again, I don't know that I was said no to any of the stuff I'm doing. Um, but I definitely probably whoop, could have said no to at least one or two things or Playing some stuff differently. But either way, let's jump in on the week's news of what's been going on. And yeah, just to recap where things are at. Um, this week had a lot of stuff. Uh, Mental Health Day was this week. So as uh, the world took a moment to pause and recognize mental health, I just want to encourage you as, you know, check on yours. It's important. And uh we could all use a little bit more. All right, let's hit some news. Uh, first off, Anne Hathaway officially took to uh, TikTok and her socials in general to um, Instagram to officially announce that they are coming back with Princess Diaries 3. Now, I'm sure this fits in the category of things for people to be mad at me about. But I've never seen the Princess Diaries. Um my daughters have. My daughters love it. I've met one of the ladies from the first two movies. The same lady that's also in like Scream 3 or 4 or whatever. But um, yeah. But Princess Diaries 3 is officially happening with Grown Up Anne Hathaway. Chris Pine has not commented on whether or not he's actually in it. He's not sure if he's in it. But, you know, there's a thing. There was a heavy chunk of uh humanitarian aid given from the celebrity community this uh week towards flood victims from Helene and also uh things that are going to flow over to uh Milton as well um at the end of last week Dolly Parton uh partnered with Walmart to donate millions to Hurricane Helene recovery. And uh, she personally gave a million dollars out of her own account to uh, restoration and to help um, fix things for Helene. Uh, there's something on my computer screen and I was just trying to wipe it off my shirt because I'm a genius. Um, but Dolly Parton gave a million of her own dollars um, in an equal turn. Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively donated a million dollars to Feed America. And Taylor Swift gave $5 million to Feed America. Um, and 
while Dolly's gift was primarily towards uh, Helene, you know, we hadn't quite seen the devastation of what was going to take place in Florida yet. And so uh, Swift and the Reynolds, you know, put their millions towards something that was going to cover both areas. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot. And while celebrity big names get a lot of clout and uh, mentions for things like that, the donations, um, I'm pretty sure if you look real hard, you're going to find a lot of people who are selflessly giving of their time, their talent and their treasure that aren't going to get mentioned just because they aren't seen in it. Now, I'm not saying these people gave the celebrities gave just for credit or anything like that, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are pouring what they've got and their time and their resources to uh, be able to minister to those who are struggling and hurting. And I think that's one of the biggest things that, that we can do as people is help people when they're at their lowest and when they need it. Um, not that you have to show up and make it about you, but being able to show up when people need you is a really big deal. And uh, so that is something that has been taking place. I know I didn't go just because I had my muggle day job. Um, but uh, my church took a, large trailer of like water and cleaning supplies and stuff like that to Helene. But yeah, hurricane season is such a rough season for, especially for the South. And it's usually a high point of anxiety and stress for people that have lived through these things. So I want to encourage you. Uh, if you have ways that you want to support those who are struggling, um, there's always going to be places to do it. And yeah, you know, I mentioned last week that I didn't go to a comic con in Boone because uh, of the hurricane destruction, I just got an email last night from that same Comic Con saying that they are trying to put their show on in Boone on November sixteenth. Is uh, they're going to try and do it? So, you know, just a little over seven weeks or five weeks from the hurricane, they want to be able to be back and do that, and it'll be good for their economy. It'll be good for their community to have some encouragement and something to do. Hopefully um, I'm going to try and check my calendar and make sure I can do it, but I think it would be a good opportunity for them. Um, but it's, that's a real fine line of like threading that needle of when is the appropriate time to start doing super fun stuff after tragedy. Um, I think for me and um, Hey Lynn, good morning. I think for me, like I was in that position of, Maybe it was 2018 or 2016. I don't remember. I think it might have been 2016 um, when my whole city was underwater and Fayetteville Comic Con happened less than a month after it. And, you know, getting out of my house to go set up at Fayetteville Comic Con was a blessing to be able to get out of my flood entrenched community because i think we had three weeks without power like getting a hotel before fayetteville comic-con that year was the first time i had had a commercial hot shower in weeks um so this might be a good opportunity for the people of boone to do that um i know that the um show that was scheduled for Asheville that same weekend is officially still canceled um which might have opened up the window for Boone to do it because they're a little less affected, even though they're still heavily affected. But we'll see um, how things play out in that nature. But yes, uh, people are giving and being encouraging, which is good. Uh, in absolute not a chance on my life news, um, the house that the movie Poltergeist was filmed in, like the movie from when I was a kid, um, Poltergeist, the house that the movie Poltergeist was filmed in, uh, is selling for one point two any or one point two one eight million dollars. Um, and it's going to become an Airbnb to recreate the experience of the movie Poltergeist. So you'll go check in at this Airbnb and it will be haunted or possessed, uh, probably through animatronics, probably through 
digital stuff like that. Hey, Tristan, good morning. But yeah, you're going to have the opportunity to Airbnb the house that the movie Poltergeist was filmed in and pay to be tormented by a possession experience in your Airbnb stay. I'm going to go ahead and click no for that because I don't want that. I don't need that. There's never a point in time, my time where I need to literally live in the house from Poltergeist. So if that's up your alley, if you're like, man, I'd really like to live in that absolute terror for two nights and play a $500 cleaning fee. <laughs> um, you're going to have the opportunity. So if you want to Airbnb the poltergeist house that is coming, uh, if you were a kid um, in the eighties, nineties, anything like that, you might've remember pizza huts reward program, where if you read a certain number of books, um, you got a free pan pizza and it was a pretty big motivator for young children at that point in time. Um, it's kind of famous. Pizza Hut is uh, giving out 1 million free pizzas to readers um, this month in honor of the book program's 40th anniversary. So readers rejoice. You can still get some free pizza. Um, J. Cole released a song um, called She Knows. And um, Rock Nation has officially removed the song. Um, because in the wake of all the allegations and involving things with P Diddy, et cetera, um, J Cole's song, she knows accuses, um, the Carter family, Beyonce and Jay-Z of being, um, and Diddy of being responsible for the murders of Aaliyah, Lisa left eye from TLC and Michael Jackson. Um, so the song is called she knows. And in the song, it's alleged that Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Diddy are responsible for those three deaths, which is a pretty big thing. So it's been taken down on many platforms. Um, this past week, Joker Folia do released, and it has been critically panned. Um, it has been commercially panned. It has been uh, audience score panned. Um if you're not familiar with Cinescore, Cinescore is a organization that stands outside of movies like a polling situation at the like voting polls and asks people to um, review and give a score to the movie they just watched. So Cinescores are... You know, they'll place people all over theaters um, across the country and say, how much would you rate the movie you just watched? Um, Joker Folia Do got a lower Cinescore than every other comic book movie ever. Hey, Josh. This is saying that Joker Folia Do got a lower Cinescore than Madam Web. A lower sin score than Morbius and the entire DC EU catalog. They got a lower sin score than Eternals. Um, and on a similar note, it's also proving to be a box office failure financially, and that it actually made less money domestically opening weekend than Madam Web and then Morbius. Um so it is not looking good. I think that what I saw with the numbers in terms of what it would be required to make back, um, they would have to make $450 million to break even. And they were under uh, $50 million for the opening weekend. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty terrible. Um, there, uh, college football game day, uh, with Pat McAfee this past weekend, um, a kid had a chance to win $75,000 with a field goal kick. And the kid was wearing vans like skater shoes. And the kid missed the $75,000 kick, but they gave him a second chance and he was able to make the second kick. They gave him $100,000 personally and donated $500,000 to flood relief. So this one kid 
field goal kick in his vans uh, netted $600,000 for between him and uh, float recovery. If you had been paying attention over the last year, um, the artist Banksy, the um, famed graffiti artist who has remained, remained in anonymity for years and years and years, um, apparently his uh, identity has been revealed uh, due to some court documents and some legal proceeding documents from one thing. And people are leaking his identity, but a lot of people are refusing to pay attention to look because they don't want to know. They want Banksy to remain a mystery. And um, because his anonymity um, has been a big deal. Josh says, uh, can't wait for your study on Penguin. The show is great. Penguin is great. Um, Penguin is rough. It is gritty. And I'm going to tell you this, the young young lady who's playing um, Sophia Falcone is an absolute treasure. She is killing it. Now, I know Colin Farrell's doing magical work with all that makeup and the prosthetic and the accent and, you know, knowing there's an Irish dude under all that <laughs> is amazing. Yes. Um, I, I, it'll probably wait until the show's over and I've got some time to process it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely in the queue and I'm going to write this down while I'm thinking about it because I'm always forgetting to make notes on things currently in the queue of um faith and fandom chapters in my mind um can't wait for sunday oh yeah um in my queue of faith and fandom chapters in my mind there's a one piece chapter up next um there's going to be a chapter on uh zelda echoes of wisdom um, which there's something I was, I did a faith and fandom 180 for LTN radio this week that really hit with that. Um, but it's going to expand on that of wisdom. There's one maybe on the doctor who episode dot and bubble. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there'll be something with a uh, penguin as we go on through there. But yeah, um, with Banksy going, jumping right back to that. Um, there was a, an, uh, there was a also a bit of controversy um in eight days in a row Banksy put up a new piece animal themed and um people you know show up to take pictures and stuff like that there's been a young man who has been running up and defacing the Banksy art um to get his own credibility and stuff and there's video footage of him defacing uh the most recent one but yeah it's kind of crazy um with that so this past week um i have not seen joker 2 I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier just the review and the response on it. i have not personally seen joker josh uh too i thought about it i almost went wednesday um but like it's kind of at that point where the negativity of it is like almost like a wave i'm kind of concerned to even try and navigate uh there because this past week was mental health day um i'm gonna point you towards two things uh if you missed it about five years ago six years ago there was a video game called gri g-r-i-s it might be called gris depending on who you talk to gri is a video game that's available on all consoles, PC, even your phone, your laptop, whatever. Gree is a game that is one of the most breathtaking and artistically beautiful game experiences I've ever had. Um, Gree is a game that has no necessarily conflict uh, or violence or bad guys. Gree is a video game where you are a woman navigating the broken reality of your own identity and self-worth and psyche that uh you some tragedy has happened in your life that shattered you and taken all of the color out of your life and gree is an exploration game 
where you travel through all the broken pieces of your heart and mind and bring the color back. The score to Gris is a literal masterpiece. Um, it's one of those things I'll have playing in the background. I bought the soundtrack. I'll have it playing in the background. I'll be listening to it when I'm writing, stuff like that. Gree, the soundtrack is wonderful. Either way, Gree was five years ago. The studio that made Gree is dropping a new game this upcoming week called Neva, N-E-V-A. And it's a young woman with a wolf deer type thing. And it's potentially looking to be as beautiful and powerful as Gree was. So, A, if you've not played Gree and you need something cathartic and emotionally strong, um, not a lot of dialogue, not a lot of action, but it's emotionally a powerful story. Even if you don't play the game, the soundtrack will rock your world emotionally. Um, but Neva is one of the games I'm most excited about. Now, in that same breath, I don't know that I've got time to play it right now, but I will buy it. I will throw every dollar that game asks for at it because it's worth it. Um, and it will sit in my queue until I finish playing Legend of Zelda and then maybe Star Wars Outlaws and then back to that. Um, but it's from Nomada Studios. It's the studio that does it and it launches on October 15th. So Tuesday it launches. Um, and it, the, the, uh, yeah, it's it's just watch a trailer for Neva or Gree. You'll you'll enjoy it. Um, Donald Glover has postponed slash canceled the remaining dates for his uh, childish Gambino tour for the uh, album that he's promoting. Um, it is unclear as to the medical reason, but while performing in New Orleans, he went to a hospital and he's going to need to have a surgery. And he says that he needs to take time to heal. Um, he hasn't given details on what that was, nor does he have to. But he says that he wants to get back out there and finish this tour after healing. But currently everything is postponed for that. Um, his his Twitter message this week was, After my show in New Orleans, I went to the hospital in Houston to make sure of an ailment that had been become apparent. After being assessed, it became clear I would not perform that night, and after more tests, I could not perform the rest of the U.S. tour, and the time asked. So, um, Donald Glover is going through that process and will be back eventually, hopefully as well, to finish the... Um... That's Danny Glover, uh, Josh. Um, Danny Glover is the dude from Lethal Weapon. Um, Donald Glover is the dude from Community, Solo, Childish Gambino, um, The Prowler in Across the Spider-Verse slash... Yeah, no, no, dude, it's, the names are real similar. Trust me, I get it. If you ask me to um, differentiate between James Masden, James Marsden, and James Marsters, I can't do the same either. Because one dude is Cyclops, one dude is Max from a goofy movie, and one dude's a action guy so there it can be pretty confusing um uh oh you're joking okay uh the but yeah it's it's been a fun week for joker fully dude just looking at it um everything outperformed it the flash the marvels morbius and madam web all outperformed joker fully do in the box office um he did look amazing as the Prowler, John. I really thought so. Um, I would be really interested to see that play out. Um, knowing that that dude is as old or older than me, I can't remember exactly where he's at, but like it's he's also kind of pushing it for age. I still want to see his Lando movie um, that he just wants to have a fun Star Wars movie. I need to re actually revisit um, Solo. I haven't watched it since theaters, but I really enjoy F. B. Waller Bridger in some things now. And um, would probably I know more about Donald Glover now than I did when I watched Solo. Um, we had a loss in the nerd community this week. Doc Harris, the narrator for Dragon Ball Z, has died at age eight, uh, 76. Previously on Dragon Ball Z, that guy. Um, 
that voice I've heard since I was 18 years old um, has passed away. Um, Taylor Swift is now the richest female musician in the world. Um, she just inched Rihanna out of the top spot. Um, and it's that her net worth has now officially crossed $1.6 billion. Um, and yeah, I, she did totally just give $5 million to, uh, feed America for flood relief and everything. Um, that's great, but $1.6 billion is a lot of money. Um, Uh, John says, I'm actually excited for Joker. I believe it's going to be a wildly left art piece. I love solo, but like a backdoor pilot. Only this yeah, I feel that. Um, I've just, you know, I left out of the original Joker movie pretty traumatized. I did not enjoy the experience and I did not watch it again until last week when my kids wanted to watch it because they thought they wanted to watch, um, Joker Folia do. I guess just because of Lady Gaga and the musical version, the aspect of it. Um, but after watching the Joker, they're like, I'm good. <laughs> um, so we'll see, but it's a, uh, it, it, it has got hit. It made less money and got less positive views than Morbius and Madam Web. So that's not, not great. Um, but yeah. Uh, rapper Kodak Black's car burst into flames. Um, during his first kick live stream, uh, so that didn't go well for him in that capacity. Um, I mentioned last week about spirit of Halloween and, you know, SNL was making jokes and we've all, you know, had seen S or spirit of Halloween memes. Spirit of Halloween is a, is officially about to level up its holiday domination this year. Um, when, uh, Halloween is over, um, this year when Halloween is over, uh, they're turning the stores or a lot of the stores will be turning into spirit of Christmas. So this year, um, they're going to be turning the stores into spirit of Christmas and, I think that's going to be um it's definitely gonna be a moneymaker. And it's definitely gonna be an interesting route to go with things. So um I'm always like kind of iffy with Christmas stuff because if Christmas stuff isn't like Jesus related, I'm like a little meh about it. I'm here for it, but like, you know, festive encouragement and everything, but you know, I'm a little biased. Um if you uh are a fan of Eliza Dushku. Like if you're a fan of Buffy or um, her, the cheerleading movies of the early years of the 90s and 2000s and the show Dollhouse and things like that, um, you might be missing Eliza Dushku and you will probably never see her on screen again. Um, Eliza Dushku has uh, transitioned a life focus into she is now a psychedelic therapy guide um in boston meaning uh that she sits with people and gives them guidance and counseling and therapy while they take psychedelic drugs and that's that's where Liza Dushku's at now uh the boston journal uh, just did a full cover piece and story on her. So if your Buffy reunion dreams were starting to get up there, I would go ahead and shelf that. Um, cause she's happy chit chatting with people while they're tripping. <laughs> um, Fern from social club is releasing a new album slash mixtape on October 25th called three, three Oh two four. Um, which is the zip code for Hollywood, Florida, where he resides. Um, and Marty from Social Club is going to be dropping a flop era two in, in the near days. Uh, HBO Max. I'm still, it's still Max. I don't know why I still call it HBO. Uh, Max has officially canceled Velma. 
the Mindy Kellig uh, Scooby Doo series. Um, if you don't know who Mindy Kellig is, she's the uh, young lady who plays Kelly Kapoor in The Office. Um, she wrote and starred in a Velma animated series that's on Max that received not a ton of love from the broad perspective, and it has officially been canceled after two seasons. Uh, this week was a big news week for DC in the fact that uh, they cast their live action John Stewart Green Lantern. Um, uh, Aaron Pierre, who is famous for some Netflix work as well as some other things, has officially been cast as John Stewart. Um, you may not know his body of work, but um, you should go check out uh, and see. He will be your live action John Stewart. So so far, we have three um names cast in the Green Lantern world of the upcoming DC universe. We have uh Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner, Kyle from Friday Night Lights as Hal Jordan and Aaron Pierre as John Stewart. Um and in other interesting and nostalgic casting news Sean Astin, Bilbo Baggins, slash the kid from the Goonies, slash all the things, uh, has been cast in his first Broadway role. Sean Astin will be taking to Broadway to take over the role of Santa in the Broadway musical of Elf. And uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, the fact that you know we're at the place where um a kid i grew up watching be a kid is now playing the old man santa it's just like cool i'm ancient um i mentioned last week that this week um wendy's was unveiling a crabby patty meal at uh their locations and the crabby patty meal has rolled out this week um you get a whole Krabby Betty box. Um, they have a pineapple uh, frosty and things like that. But there has been a bunch of backlash this week with it, it coming out because the since departed creator of SpongeBob, the guy who created SpongeBob and was the primary showrunner for SpongeBob for the majority of his existence. SpongeBob's creator uh, was very adamant against fast food. And part of his deal with uh, Nickelodeon and with the property of uh, SpongeBob was that their product not be used specifically to promote eating fast food. That was part of his contract. He looked at uh, the Krusty Krab as a mockery slash sat satire of the fast food industry because he was adamantly against it. And now that he's passed, uh, them using SpongeBob to literally sell burgers um, is something that uh, true SpongeBob fans by their uh, acknowledgement because I didn't know this existed until seeing fan reactions that true Spongebob fans are livid that they are directly disrespecting the wishes of the creator of the character and uh, there's lots of petitions and videos and things like that saying if you actually love Spongebob don't go eat this Um, I don't know that I was ever going to eat it um, I definitely strongly considered getting a pineapple frosty um, just because that sounds magical. But, you know, there is a. There's a thing uh, this week, the office star slash also mean girls slash also walk hard. The Dewey Cox story, um, Jenna Fisher, who has made her career hosting the pod, uh, the office ladies podcast um, over the last 
a uh, few years, uh, announced that she went through breast cancer treatment in the past year and she kept it secret. Um, and she wanted it out of the public eye and everything. Uh, but that now she is through, she has gone through the chemo, the things, um, the surgeries, and that she is on the other side of it and she is cancer free. She wanted to wait until she was on the other side of it, um, before she said anything. Um, but now, um, that has been announced and she wanted to let the rest of the world know that, you know, that happened and that she's on the other side of it. And she said she also wanted to stop having to wear wigs, um, as her hair is growing back and everything. So I'm excited for Jenna that she is on the other side of it. And I know that is a struggle, um, to live that way. And so excited and glad that she's okay. Um, McDonald's doing more fun, happy or fun fast food situations. Uh, McDonald's is about to launch a new adult happy meal featuring friends, collectible figures. Um, and it will also feature a special Monica sauce. But uh, the Friends box it will include a different... They look like Funko Pops. But I don't think they're officially Funko Pops. I don't know. Um, but they... Uh, yeah, they're releasing a Friends box. Uh, that will be an adult McDonald's Happy Meal toy. So if you know somebody that just really loves friends, you're going to have a chance to get an adult Happy Meal toy with them. Uh, this week, uh, Netflix released a um, animated series. I, I don't think it's an anime, but they released an animated series of Tomb Raider uh, that you can find the series on. It's the Legend Tomb Raider, the Legend of Laura Croft. Um, and Haley Atwell, Agent Carter, Peggy Carter, is playing Lara Croft in this. Um, and the thing that I've been told most is go into it expecting Saturday morning cartoon level storytelling and adventure, and you'll be okay. Um, but if you definitely miss Tomb Raider and Lara Croft, there is something that's dropped out there. Um, M. Night Shyamalan dropped a new horror film slash suspense thriller on Max called Caddo Lake or Sado Lake. I think it's Caddo Lake, C-A-D-D-O Lake. Um, it's on Max. It's a new project from Shyamalan. Um, Reacher, uh, the Alan Richardson's show, uh, has the third season is set to debut in 2025, and they've officially renewed it for a fourth season before the third season has even dropped. So that's good to know, especially with some of the studios being in peril. There's also discussion of a spinoff show uh, with one of the characters that was heavily featured in season one and two. Um, if you are a fan of Dogma, the Kevin Smith film on uh, <laughs> religious culture from 20 some years ago, um, it has not been in print or in digital or accessible for purchase uh, for a long time now because Harvey Weinstein had the rights to it. And through all of Harvey Weinstein's legal trouble, dogma was caught up in the mess of that. Kevin Smith has now officially gotten control uh, of dogma from Harvey Weinstein and will officially be not only re-releasing it digitally, It'll be going back to theaters and he's going to tour the movie around and do Q and a with it, with some of the stars moving forward. So since he hasn't got to touch it in a few years, uh, Henry Cavill is going to be starring in a live action Voltron movie because we will do anything to Henry Cavill, except let the man make his Warhammer movie. So in series, um, I don't know um, hey Jeff, good morning, man. I don't know, and whoever just laughed at Josh Cole's Spirit of Halloween or Spirit of Christmas thing, they are literally making it a Spirit of Christmas. That's real. Um, but Henry Cavill is going to be in a live action Voltron movie. Is that on the list of things I needed? No, 
Uh, will I watch it because Henry Cavill's in it? Probably. Um, that's the thing. Uh, if you haven't been, you know, catching up with stuff, Netflix is moving more in the direction of actually becoming a full service live broadcasting network as well as being our stream service. Uh, one of the big deals is come January, Monday Night Raw um, for the WWE will be broadcast live on Netflix. And uh, a new big announcement they just dropped this week is that John Mulaney is going to be getting his own live talk show like the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel Live and stuff like that. John Mulaney is going to be getting his own talk show that will be streamed live on Netflix. Um, so it will have consistent live broadcasting uh, with that. Uh, Nintendo dropped some new hardware this week, which is a thing that is definitely interesting, but definitely falls into this category of, did we need this? Now, what do, I, do I want this? Potentially. Would I be mad if I have it? No. Um, Nintendo this week dropped the Alarmo sound clock. And the Alarmo sound clock is a Nintendo alarm clock with a digital space that you can have live in the world of certain video games and hear their sounds and basically be like a background thing. But the Alarmo alarm clock, which will effectively be kind of like Alexa or Echo or anything like that, um, will play Nintendo sounds and have Nintendo action going on the screen and is even said to have like an AI interface where like Mario can interact with what's going on on the screen in real time based on the numbers changing. So uh, if you want to look at that, um, there's a video of um, you can check IGN or Nintendo of where they show just 16 minutes of this clock doing its own thing, telling time, but also having an interactive experience. So you can have your alarm set the breath of the wild and have link just doing shenanigans throughout Hyrule. Um, the alarm clock from Nintendo retails at a hundred dollars. And so if you want your own AI Nintendo powered home device, you now have that option. Um, the My Hero Academia manga ended um, this past summer in Shohen Jump. The next to last manga in print book form is out, and the final manga will drop in February. And the show is right on its heels. The Final season of My Hero Academia will air in 2025, um, shortly after the book drops, and in some cases even before. If you are a fan of pew pewing and spooky things, Fortnite is the place you want to be right now. Fort Nightmares officially returns to uh, the world of Fortnite, uh, where you can play with. Uh, the dude from the te or play with Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, the puppet from Saw, um, uh, Mephisto from Marvel potentially, um, and some other spooky characters are now available for you to play with in Fortnite. So, I just imagine some kid rolling across a tricycle in the middle of a, lot, a firefight in Fortnite with a little jigsaw puppet. That's hilarious. Um, scientists have found um, a jellyfish breed. Um, some comb jellyfish specifically. Um, where two jellyfish combined into one. They literally Dragon Ball Z fusioned into one uh, body and even combined nervous systems. 
Um, they did tests on it to see if it was just holding on, if it had like gri gripped itself or whatever else. But they literally found that not only had this jellyfish linked up physically, they had literally combined its nervous system into one entity. So uh, they're exploring that, which I don't know if that's great. Um, but there's literally jellyfish out there that are morphing into two things. Uh, TikTok is being sued by California, New York, and a group of 14 state attorney generals. Um, specifically, the owners of TikTok, ByteDance, are being sued um, for saying that they intentionally misled about the safety of the platform and that um, they have done irreparable damage to the mental health of U.S. teenagers. And I don't know that I disagree with that completely. Um, I do think that has a responsibility on parents and parenting. Um, but uh, there are 14 states combining together to sue ByteDance um, for the damage done to the mind of teenagers. Again, I think a lot of that falls into parenting. A lot of that falls into what you choose your... Because you can't stop kids from getting the things, but you can set standards and you can, you know, do it. But then again, you know, nothing's stopping my kids from do, disobeying me either. Uh, but I don't know that them suing them is going to do that. Because, I mean, literally, we've witch hunted TikTok so badly that... It's we're creating that mindset that, you know, if the government is going this hard after it, they must be the good guys um, because it has gone strong witch hunt vibes um, with it. Now, there's plenty of bad things on TikTok, but the reality is this TikTok is a reflection of the people. And if there's bad things on TikTok, it's because there's bad things within us. We're just giving people more access to us, and that's where the danger lies. Um uh, Tesla announced that they're going to be uh, releasing a whole new fleet of different autonomous robot cars, robot taxis, uh, that have no pedals, have no steering wheels, and um, can just be programmed by app and pick you up from a whole bus load to a car load, which is, you know, there's a, a story somewhere in my news feed for this of how horribly wrong that's already gone. Uh, this week, Krispy Kreme is officially launching and rolling out with McDonald's. Um, they're going to be doing it nationwide, but they're starting with select locations where select locations will be able to have hot, fresh Krispy Kreme donuts in the store. Um, and they, depending on your location, you can find free Krispy Kreme donuts at certain McDonald's across the country as a promotion for this, but you'll be able to get a six pack of original glazed with your meal or an individual one. Um, yeah. Uh, as the last, yeah, yeah. Woohoo donuts. Um, Heath McNeese has a Simpsons themed rap song called mm -hmm donuts. Uh, the, in the aftermath of hurricane, uh, Helene, uh, you know, we've already seen how much damage Milton has done. And as the last count that I've seen, um, 12 people are dead um, from Hurricane Milton. And there are millions of people that were without power as of the middle of the week. Um, it is being restored slowly. I'm seeing some of my friends check in and everything. But uh, it's been in that capacity. Um. One of the jokes, especially living in the South, is it's not a crisis unless Waffle House shuts down. And that's, you know, what is kind of an indicator for people of what's really an issue. And during Hurricane Milton, before Hurricane Milton arrived, Waffle House shut down 90 Florida locations. Now, you can describe damage and stuff by numbers and by pictures and things, but when you tell me a storm is bad enough, 
to shut down 90 Waffle Houses. Um, that's near apocalyptic revelation, biblical level stuff. That's how you measure true catastrophes is how many Waffle Houses does it shut down? Um, <laughs> Lint Biscuit, which isn't a phrase I expected to utter this morning. Uh, Lint Biscuit is filing a lawsuit against UMG, which is a music production company that they implemented intentionally fraudulent and deliberately designed policies to steal royalties from artists. And Lint Biscuit is suing UMG for $200 million in unpaid royalties. So there's that. Um, in other music royalty news, uh, <laughs> Taylor Swift has officially uh, inspired other people. And if you aren't aware, just to give you a backstory on this, um, with if you've moderately heard of like Taylor's versions of things and why they exist, Taylor Smith has been Taylor Taylor Swift, not Smith. Taylor Swift has been re-recording and remastering and re-releasing her older albums so that she has the rights to them, not a music studio, um, because she was having conflict with her studios, and which is why she's now the richest female musician in the world, um, because she did that, and she re-released those things as a big portion of it. She is not the first person to do that. Um, Reba McIntyre did this back in the 80s and 90s, which is one of the reasons why Reba remained as financially stable and as successful as she was is because she really re-released her albums with new masters so that she could keep the profits as well. Um, this has become a growing trend. Uh, Taylor's done it with all of her stuff. Um, Reba McIntyre did it. Uh, Switchfoot did it last year with the beautiful letdown because they also did, did not own the masters to their most successful album. Um, this year, uh, the WWE had Living Color re-record and remaster and re-release their iconic song, Cult of Personality, because they weren't getting paid for the rights that the WWE was paying for CM Punk to use it as his theme song. Um, and they didn't ask for this. They didn't initiate it. The WWE said, Hey, we would rather pay you than this company that's milking you. Please re-release your song and we'll use that. So if you are a wrestling fan, you, and you hear CM Punk make an entrance, you are hearing a freshly recorded remastered, uh, version of the song that actually allows the band to get the profits for their song. So there's that. Um, if you weren't aware uh, in recent weeks and months, uh, Sandra Bullock's partner, spouse, person passed away. And um, this past week, she made her first public appearance since losing her partner. Um, and she's uh, potentially working with Keanu Reeves on a... Uh, anniversary slash documentary thing on the making of speed. So that's interesting with that. Um, the chosen is now the most translated um, television series of all time. Um, the chosen has officially been translated into 50 languages um, with the, they have intentions of translating it into 550 more. Now, First of all, you listening to this, you watching this, can you even name 50 languages? Because I can't. I absolutely cannot name 50 languages, let alone 600 languages. That's bonkers. Spanish, French, yeah, no, it's over. Chinese, Japanese. I, th I don't, I think I can name food ethnicities, not languages, but. There are definitely a lot, and The Chosen has already been translated into 50 of them with more on the way. Um, this uh, past uh, season of The Voice, 
um, contestants. Um, Derek Benson, you speak Hillbilly. There you go. Um, this past season, The Voice season twenty six, uh, the when even not on camera, the contestants on The Voice had a full church service out by the pool of the hotel they were staying in um, and had a full worship session and some of them recorded it um, and had all the comp the, com the competition just sitting around worshiping Jesus, which is pretty cool. If you want to check that out, see something that's you know not necessarily going to make the, the, the broadcast. Um, uh, one of the things, as we talk about, you know, Taylor Swift giving $5 million to, Flood Recovery, Ryan Reynolds giving a million dollars, Dolly giving a million and partnering with Walmart to get more millions. Uh, there was a big upset this week and be nice to each other in the comments, by the way, y'all. Um, There's a big upset this week when FEMA announced that they were going to be offering $750 to those affected by flood by Hurricane Helene. Not even gotten to Milton yet. And that that was where our financials were was pretty discouraging. Um, and coming from somebody who lived through flooding, every little bit helps, and that doesn't feel like it's a lot. Um, uh, previously, I mentioned that uh, Tesla announced they were going to be launching a line of completely automated, no pedal, no steering wheel uh, taxis. Um, well, in Minnesota this week, um, footage has been released of a teenager named Sam Dutcher who almost died when his car went into full autopilot and had him traveling at the breakneck speed of 113 miles per hour. He, um, was on the phone with his mother who was on the phone with the police as she begged the police not to kill her child but, and that he was not running from them intentionally and that this wasn't a, a thing um, that he was doing as a crime. Their car literally could not be stopped. And um, there's footage of the whole process of the cops putting their own lives at risk to try and slow this kid's car down and rescue him. But, you know, in the same news phrase, we have, hey, a full line of automated taxis to, hey, this kid almost died because his autopilot car was going 113 miles an hour. Shenanigans. I don't even, I don't even like driving a car that doesn't have a CD player. Get out of here. I don't want this. Um, U.S. and Britain have reportedly launched airstrikes in Yemen, um, which is not something I see a lot of stuff covering. British forces are saying it wasn't them, it was us. But either way, we're getting involved in these things. Um, uh, Elon Musk in a surprising, I don't know if anything surprised me with Elon Musk, particularly because um, he is an eclectic dude. Uh, Elon Musk showed up to give a, a speech at Trump's rally in Pennsylvania and where he, um, Hey CJ, what's up dude? Um, where he made it to, uh, the thing and was a little even more eclectic than normal, but, and he made the statement that he is dark MAGA. Because he wore like all black. So it's weird. But, you know, it's weird for somebody of that much power to actually make a full political statement. But he did. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm not here to tout all of Diddy's crimes or uh, accused crimes or anything like that. But, uh, one, you know, as this stuff is going on, more video footage of things that has just been ignored over the years has kind of been popping back up. And one of the things that uh, has popped back up was from the 2014 golden globes. There is a video of Diddy uh, leaning in to kiss Bono as he's, as an award is being presented and Bono literally hard swerving him and like ducking out of the way. Um, so that video is probably something you're going to be seeing as like, 
a green screen meme coming up soon. Um, a in India, a one hundred and ten year old Hindu man uh, has been found alive in a cave. Um, he had been trapped in a cave, and for a very long time. And uh, with the assistance of some others, was able to walk out with a cane. This dude's 110 years old, and uh, there's video footage of them getting him out of there. But um, I don't want to be in a cave now. A 110-year-old me in a loincloth does not want to be in a cave. Um, this past week, uh, California was ravaged by an army of teenagers ransacking 7-Eleven stores. Um, there is live footage of several of the stores where a whole mob of teenagers collectively busts doors down on 7-Elevens, injuring some of the employees, uh, robbing, looting, and stealing the store together, like an organized front. Um, uh, between July 12th and September, September 20th, there have been 14 different robberies across Los Angeles of groups of teens collectively robbing these convenience stores together. Um, if there's ever been a Batman sounding problem, it's that. Um, there is potentially work on a hypersonic jet called the Stargazer that uh, is being built and slash te tested that when launched will be able to take passengers from New York to London in one hour. Crossing the Atlantic at 4,600 miles per hour. That's like Star Wars hyperspace level stuff. That's like, if I'm sorry, if I paid to get on that jet and when they crank up, I don't see the white dots turn into things behind me. They're doing it wrong. Um, and I also don't know that I've ever needed to go to London that quickly, that fast. Uh, um, but a hypersonic jet is being built and this would potentially not just be for military use, but would actually become a commercial thing that you can get across the Atlantic Ocean in an hour. Um, there's lots of footage of devastation from Hurricane Milton, from showing things in Disney to showing things in the different areas. But one of the sites I think that was probably most surprising for me to see was that the, uh, the football stadium where the, in Tampa Bay, um, the Tropicana Bowl, I believe, the roof being ripped off and broken through on that was pretty devastating to see. So I just want to encourage you as there, as people are going through relief efforts, as people are doing stuff, make sure that if you have the ability and you desire to, to reach out and help where you can. Um, the whole Southeast is in kind of shambles. Tropicana Dome, thank you, um, CJ. Um, yeah, the Tropicana Dome, seeing that roof ripped was pretty darn uh alarming but yeah that's that's a lot of my uh actual news content for the week there's there's been a lot going on and uh before we get into the bible reading too uh just to let you know um i'll be at fayetteville comic-con next week friday and saturday or saturday and sunday um i had tickets to a judah and the lion concert concert on sunday night but they moved the venue and I just hate the venue they moved it to, and I'm too short to see. And it's they moved the time, so I gave those tickets away. Um, so I'll be able to comic on the whole time. Um, and then potentially, look, we've got Empire Comic Con coming up on the 27th or 26th, whatever that Saturday is before Halloween. And then, as I mentioned, Boone Comic Con reached out today or last night that they are going to try and reschedule for November 16th. Um, I also might be stopping by Fayetteville Comic Con or no, uh, NC Comic Con as well. So I'll be on the lookout for some of those coming up. Um, new stuff. I 
have a new sticker that is officially this week out. Uh, it is inspired by my current favorite song uh, by 21 Pilots. It's my current favorite song, period. Um, but it's the by 21 Pilots. It's called uh, Oldie Station is the song. But uh, the, the chorus of the song says, when darkness rolls on you, push on through. And um, so design this of a you know flower growing through a musty old radio, hence the oldie station. Um, I like it. And I think people that don't know 21 pilots will still connect with it. Cause I think that's something we all can kind of relate to also have a newer version of the um, gangsters need forehead kisses just because the response was so good with the, the first batch I made or had made that I was like, okay, let's go ahead and get a, a good amount of these. So those are coming up. Um, been doing the, uh, my Inktober art prompts and I don't know where the rest of my stack is. I know there's somewhere, but uh, the last one I did was Vendetta, um, which I don't know of anything else to do other than V for Vendetta. Um, but I am going to keep churning my way through those. I am currently, I need to do three to catch up. I need to do whisper faint and whatever today is. Um, but this is potentially the busiest weekend of my year for whatever reason, uh, between church work and, uh, life and weddings and stuff. So that, that is pretty girthy. So let's go ahead and jump into Bible reading. Cause I have to go do my muggle job for a little bit too, and then go do my church job. Cause, uh, this weekend we have, um, I'm preaching Sunday. We have ba several baptisms, and we have an after service lunch kind of new beginners class meeting um, that I'm leading as well. That Sunday and then Saturday I'm DJing till like one o'clock in the morning for a wedding. And then I've got the rehearsal tonight. So there's just like a, a lot. And I'm like horrible life choices in terms of planning and adulting, but it's all good. All right. We're going to do the role for initiative Bible reading. Um, with this is going to be, I'm going to roll 70 and dice, um, have three D20s, uh, my three favorite D20s, um, and a D10, All right? This is a D10. No, I grabbed the wrong one. That's an eight. Is it? No. The zero counts as a 10. That's right. All right. So I've got a, I've got 70 in dice. We'll roll these and then subtract four. That allows us to go through the 66 books of the Bible, including the first four books. All right. So. Ooh, low roll. If this was a game, I'm dead. <laughs> if, if this was a game, I straight uh, met an unfortunate fate. Because that is not bueno. Um, two plus thirteen plus five plus seven equals. All right, so I rolled a twenty-seven, which means we're going to subtract four, which will put us in the twenty-third book of the Bible. So let's get there. Um, which is just over, uh, halfway through the Old Testament. All right, so 23rd book of the Bible. One. 22, 23. Oh, Isaiah. Hey, oh. Um, I'm down for Isaiah. That is 855. Let's see. Isaiah's got a bunch of chapters. Isaiah 30, 41, 57, good grief, 65. Well, isn't that convenient? Isaiah has the same number of chapters as there are books of the Bible. 
a little point of reference I didn't know. Um, so we'll do the exact same thing of rolling with 70 and then subtracting uh, four. So let's see where we're at. So eight, 12, 15, nine. Right. It's 12, 15, subtract four, nine. All right, so we're going to be in Isaiah chapter nine. That's where we're going to be. That's a naked page right there. I hadn't touched this section in this Bible yet. This is a new Bible. I just started it in like September or August, but this one's naked. All right. Isaiah chapter 9, as I get out my... Highlighter and pencil. And I am using the uh, Replicate Here journal for my devotional reading. I'll kind of go over that again in a minute for those of y'all who haven't seen this yet. Um, go ahead. Get started writing this. So Isaiah chapter 9. 9. And today is 10. 11. All right. Isaiah chapter 9. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people in walking in darkness. Oh, we get like a a famous prophetic one. Cool. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the deep darkness, a light has dawned. This is what we get at Christmas. Um, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people before at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. That's a great line. The bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. It will be fuel for the fire. The time of fighting is over. The struggle is over. For to us a child is born. This is literally the Christmas passage. Um, for to us a child is born, a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establish and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Almighty will accomplish this. That's such a strong phrase. Um, upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Verse 8 says, The Lord has sent a message against Jacob, it will fall on Israel. All the people will know it. Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria who say with pride and arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have felled, but we will replace them with cedars. But the Lord has strengthened Rezin's foes against them and spurred their enemies on. The Armians or Arameans from east and Philistines from the west have devoured Israel with an open mouth. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. But the people have not returned to him who struck them, nor have they sought the Almighty Lord. So the Lord will cut them off from Israel, both head and tail. 
the palm branch and the reed in a single day. The elders and dignitaries are the head. The prophets who teach are the lies in the tale. Those who guide this people mislead them, and those who are guided are led astray. That's a strong thing right there. Therefore, the Lord will take no pleasure in the young men, nor the pity the fatherless and the widows, for everyone is ungodly and wicked. Every mouth speaks folly. Yet for all of this, his anger is not turned away, and his hand is not upraised. Surely wickedness burns like a fire. It consumes briars and thorns. It sets the forest thickets ablaze, so it rolls upward a column of smoke. By the wrath of the Lord Almighty, the land will be scorched, and the people will be fuel for the fire. They will not spare one another. On the right they will devour, but still be hungry. On the left they will eat, but not be satisfied. Even each will feed on the flesh of their own offspring. Manasseh will feed on Ephraim, Ephraim on Manasseh. Together they will turn against Judah. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is not upra- His hand is still upraised. And I think it's such a interesting thing. Like with this one, they kind of Tarantino it. Of um, we get the thing of saying, yeah, God is going to work this out. He's going to establish his kingdom. He's going to do these things. But the current condition of where things are is that because people are rebellious, they're losing everything and they're turning away from it. And one of the things I do with this here journal is that the first thing is I'm supposed to pick one verse to focus on, uh, kind of be like a memorization thing. Um, I like the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those who living in the land of darkness is the light of dawn. I like that one. Um, but I really feel like uh, the verse that hits me the most that I want to focus on is uh, Isaiah 9, 6. Or no, sorry, Isaiah 9, 7. Of the greatness, and so part of the thing is you write out the one verse you're focusing on, of the greatness of his government. And peace. There will be no end. He will reign. On David's house, on David's throne. And over his kingdom. Derek, this is relevant for today, dude. It really is. Um, Establishing... And upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And one thing, I'm going to write this out in my notes of it. Um, the fact it says the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Um not the zeal for the Lord, not that it's our zeal, but it's it's God's passion. And I feel like there's never going to be a way human beings can set up God's kingdom or establish the kind of government that God wants established, that it's only his power, his passion, his purpose that will do those things. And which is why we're so discouraged when we see anything else, because this is not how it is. Um, 
So the next thing is the highlight is the first thing. That's the H and uh, here. The second thing is explain and explaining that verse is simply that God will establish his kingdom. in ways only he can. With, what are the words that were used? Greatness? Justice? Righteousness? is what he's going to build his kingdom with. What materials? And that he'll do it through his zeal. Zeal alone. And then, uh, if y'all are popping in here, uh, just joining in, I'm doing the role for initiative Bible reading, and we did Isaiah chapter 9, and we're focusing on verse 7. Um, on the application, so how does this apply to my life? Um, I think this applies to my life by having a kingdom perspective. Is one way it applies. I think another way it applies is by as much as possible building how he builds and by being faithful to what he builds. And one of the things that the next thing is that you respond and you respond with prayer. So my prayer, um, I'm going to write this while I do it. I am praying it. Um, God, help me. Help me see where you are at work. And what you are building. Help me have peace living in a time and structure that is not yet what you will establish. And then uh, there's a reset thing of, you know, seeing where you are in your relationships, in your environment, your scripture, your emotions, your thankfulness. This is just something for me to do throughout the day. Um, I am doing that in that capacity of, you know, trying my best to go back to revisit. Now, full discretion. I'm not great at doing this every day. So don't feel like I'm always this because, like, I will let this end up getting out of hand and me not giving it the time that it should but it is a goal. It's a purpose. Um, so that's the reading for the day. That's the news for the day. Um, I'm going to get ready to head out and go do my muggle job and my church job and all the jobs. Um, I love what I get to do and I'm grateful for it. Um, ooh, cool. Um, yeah, neat. So I want to take a moment to thank our, uh, Patreon supporters, um, Lynn Turner, uh, let me switch, I clicked the wrong button there. Lynn Turner, uh, David Brooks, 
um, Jeff Weimer, Colin Sproles, Jamie Montgomery, uh, Matthew or the Coleman family, Jonathan Herman, Ron Petit, Gear Saber Cosplay, uh, Tesh or sorry, Scott Ward, Alicia Glenn, Candace Davis, uh, Jay Sheed, Jason Crutchfield, Mike Perna, Todd Turner, John Jacobs, Zach Harris, Caleb Grimm, Jeanette Skaggs, Jason Bullock, Christina Ray. Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Rebecca Godlove, and Adam Davis, thank you all for taking time to be here, to be present, for the encouragement that you give, and um, and the, you know, next month or two, we're going to be finishing off cons for the year. I don't know if we're going to finish, who knows what I'm doing, um, <laughs> but we've got, we've got more shows coming up than I have for the last month, and um, those are going to be a lot of opportunities, um, to be able to minister and bless people and you all make all of that possible. So thank you for doing what you do and being who you are with that. And um, thanks for reaching out, for encouraging, for being a part of faith and fandom as a whole. And I hope that you have a great day and I hope that I get to see you at a con real soon. Bye. all.